Hey, ninth graders, it's uh, April 2nd now on Thursday. We're going to start on the top of page 443. You can see the definition of pressure. I've already mentioned this to you, but I'm going to say it again. Pressure by definition is force divided by area. And I've already done my little routine of standing on one foot. Pressure is measured in Pascals in the uh, SI system. And force is measured in newtons, and area is measured in square meters. So one pascal is one newton per square meter. And I told you that a newton is about the weight you feel in your hand with a 100 uh, gram mass or a quarter pound is a newton. OK. And uh, the pressure in pascals is a very small unit of pressure. And so we normally use kilopascals in our everyday use. Now, what I'd like to tell you is in the English system, I'll put it in green, we measure uh, PSI is pounds per square inch. PSI is pounds per square inch. And oh, by the way, if cross multiply you see that force is equal to pressure times area and at this point in time we go out and we weigh my car typically at school we have more fun because we're not constrained to be at home but what i do is i weigh my car by taking two pieces of cardboard a tire gauge and a meter stick and so what I do is I put this underneath the wheel like this on one side and then on the other side. And what I get is that little foot pad on the bottom of the wheel that's attached to the ground. And that little foot pad is a little rectangular spot attached to the ground. And so let's suppose it's uh, five inches on one side. And let's make it six inches on the other. Okay, so what was five times six? 30? And you take that times what it says on the tire pressure gauge. And let's suppose it says 30 there also, 30 PSI. Actually, I run mine around 34. Let's say 34 pounds per square inch. So the pressure in PSI. And the area in square inches, this is pounds per square inch, and this is square inches. Square inches cancel, and it ends up in pounds of force on that wheel. And so that's like, of course, 1,220, that's uh, 900, uh, it's 1,020. And so it's a thousand on that wheel, but you got to do it on the other three wheels. And so what you end up with is around 4,000 ish. Then uh, pounds in your car weighs. And then you look inside the front door on a little placard there, and you'll find out, in fact, that it weighs about that much. And my classes are able to get it really close just by using the definition of area, I mean, of pressure. So, that's a fun activity. Now, let me tell you what pressure is in real life. If you were to take a square inch, about this size right here, of air that's resting on your shoulder and run it all the way to the top of the atmosphere, all 50 miles up, and you were to weigh all that air in that little column that's one square inch, it would weigh 14.7 pounds. 14.7 pounds. Can I say 15? That's pretty close. Well, this right here, I'm having a hard time lifting, is a five kilo mass. And five times 2.2 means it's about 11 pounds. And 11 pounds, 15 pounds is more than that. So that column of air is pressing down here, pressing down there, pressing down here, pressing down there, pressing down there. And the question is, then why don't I crush? And the answer is because there's air on the inside pressing out and equalizing it 
And so in the bottom of the feet of air. That pressure is all around me, pressing from all sides. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and show you another little. Did I say last time that if you increase, if you decrease the cross sectional area, that it increases the pressure? So if you stand on one foot, there's more pressure on the floor? I did. So here's what I'm going to show you. Now I've got this balloon. This is called the bed of nails demonstration. Make it about that big, about big enough to sit on the top of this, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and tie it off. We're gonna go ahead and put this bed of nails on the rack. And you'll do this at college and they'll have a bigger bed of nails about this big. And then some guy will lay on it. And they'll show you that because of all of this surface area, that when you make the area a whole lot bigger, then the pressure goes down on any one nail. And so that's pretty neat. If you spread out the force over a bigger area, then the pressure goes down on any one nail. So we're just going to lay that right there. And you can see that it's not breaking. And so we'll go ahead and we'll put 200 gram mass on there. That's like about a half a pound. We'll put another half a pound. So now we got a whole pound on top of it. And then we'll go ahead and just crank it up there, 500 grams. So that's like another pound, a uh, pound and a quarter. Now we're up to about 200. Grams. Oh, it's not supposed to happen yet. Wow. Because when I go ahead, I, I got a little greedy and I put too much uh, force on there. When I go ahead and put that balloon on there again with this next one, you can see that it pops right away because that's a very small amount of area with the balloon on there and it doesn't even hold up the board. When I lay the board on top of the balloon, it pops. That's called the old bit that I'm talking about, okay? Now, I don't hurt myself. Uh, this is Pascal's principle we're trying to talk about. So we have to talk about pressure. Do you guys see this right here? Now, what happens if I squeeze on this? I got a little teeny hole over here. If I squeeze on it, can you guys see this? Do you see that? Perhaps you don't. Yeah, now you do. Okay, well, what's gonna happen if I pull the cap off? Is there that big old column of air that's pressing down on top of the water? Is that just like as though I was pushing pressure over here and causing the water to squirt? It is. And so you can see you got water coming out of there. But what do they do when they got a hole in the big old water tower? They just put the cap back on. All of those water towers have a cap on the top, and a hole in the top to allow atmospheric pressure to push that water out down to your houses. And that's why they put them up on a high tower. All right, so that's that little demonstration. And of course, you remember the Cartesian diver that I've already talked about, pressure down here causes pressure against the balloon right there, which squeezes that air into a smaller area. And so it's like your life preserver got smaller and you sink. And if I release the pressure, then the air pocket gets bigger and your life preserver is bigger again. And so you come back up. Uh, this is an example of a hydraulic lift. Okay, but first we're gonna do calculating pressure on page 443. This is the math, you don't like math, but here it comes. Atmospheric pressure at sea level is about 101 kilopascals. So I told you they measure in kilopascals. I told you 14.7 pounds. Well, that's the same as 101.3 kilopascals. One atmosphere of pressure, that big old column I was talking about, is the same as 14.7 psi 
pounds per square inch, but we don't use that here because that's English units. Instead, we say one atmosphere of pressure is 101.3, little k, big P, little a. Well, what do they want to know? How much total force does the Earth's atmosphere push on an average human being? Assume the surface area of an average human is 1.8 square meters. Okay. Well, isn't this the same as the pressure is force per unit area? Now, pressure is measured in pascals, so this is 101,300 pascals. Because you've got to take this three bunny hops to the right, you've got to multiply by a thousand and fill in the zeros. And so that's a thousand times 101.3. I think they rounded it off to 101, didn't they? So we'll just do it like they did 101,000 pascals. That goes right here. And then the force, what are they looking for? How much? Uh, Total force, so it's 1.8 square meters. So what are you going to do? You're going to cross multiply. Force, cross multiply. Force times the invisible one equals 101,000 times 1 1.8. And they got 182,000 newtons, which is about 45,000 pounds. OK, let's go to the next page. Pascal's principle, as applied to a hydraulic lift. Well, let me draw a picture of this thing. It looks like this. There's a small cylinder and a big cylinder. Connected. Like that. And you put your hand over here. That's three fingered hand. And you apply a small force. That's force number one to a small area. Area number one. A small force to a small area will equal a big force. For a big area. What is uh, pressure? Isn't it force over area? So the pressure over here is equal to the pressure over there because Pascal said that the pressure is felt all the way throughout the fluid when it's confined like that. And so if pressure is force over area, it means force over area equals force over area. And over here we have your car. There it is. And that's a big force. So I made it a capital F. And so this is the equation you're going to use. And we're going to plug and chug. That equals this. OK. And so let's uh, take a problem. This is a hydraulic lift. Well, let me demonstrate it first of all. If you put your uh, if you put your car on there, here's your car. Then all it takes is a pinky finger of force to lift your car, and you smile. But your car is real heavy. So if you want to push down on this side. Over here, it's real easy. Over here, it's hard. It's a big force, big area, and it's going to equal the same pressure as a little force, little area. That's Pascal's principle applied to the hydraulic lift. And when you go down to the gas station, you know that. They'll lift up your car so they can service. So example problem number two, hydraulic lift is used to lift a heavy machine that is pushing down on a 2.8 square meters. 2.8 square meter platform, big platform, with a force of 3,700 newtons. 3,700 
newtons. That's not a really very big car because you divide that by four. Uh, it's, you know, one newton is a quarter of a pound divided by four, four nines or 36. It's a thousand pounds or less, less than a thousand. That's a small car. That's not even a car. Okay, what force must be exerted on a 0 0.072 square meters? 0 0.072 square meters to lift the heavy machine. They want to know what's this force. Do you have any math skills at all? Some of you are screaming. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Once you cross multiply. And so what do we end up with? Let me get this thing out of the way. Here's what we end up with. 2.8 times X equals 0 0.072 times 3,700. You know why I'm not putting units on there? Because this is just a simple proportion. And so if these units over here are in Newtons and square meters, and these are over here, in newtons and square meters. And so I don't have to mess with the units. And we're going to divide both sides by 2.8. We're going to get our answer by taking 0 0.072 times 3,700. 0 0.072 times 3,700 equals divided by 2.8 equals 95.1. Look what they say in the answer. They say 95. So this force, that little force, is 95 Newtons. Which is lifting up this big old 3,700 Newton machine. It is similar to what we learned with simple machines. You remember mechanical advantage? And it's solved by simply doing a simple proportion. That is Pascal's principle. See ya.